Lauren Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by Bill Morris, and I'm joined by James Craze from Ernie. How are you for today? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ernie Hort is your granddad. He is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so tell us about the show. What is it exactly? Okay, so um, my granddad Ernie wrote um, an autobiography um, in 1997. Um, I was only five at the time, so I didn't know anything about it. And then uh, he tried to get it published. It didn't it didn't happen so he put it away and then um, in 2010 when he died uh, I f found the autobiography and uh, read it for the first time and I was just amazed by it so I turned it into um, a play and it, yeah it just kind of tells his life story. What does it mean to you to share your granddad's life on stage? Um, it's great I mean it's um, I get a lot of pride in being able to share his story you know I never um, really set out to do it you know I never kind of sat down and went right I really want to do a play about my granddad's life story it just sort of happened I wanted to do a one man show and I felt like um, that book had potential to be a play and so I just started to work on it do a, did a few scratch scenes and stuff and eventually it came about and I was like this is great I'm really enjoying it so so you play over is it 30 characters is it 34 characters and then my granddad uh, gets older throughout the play so he starts at the age of 12 and finishes at the age of 73 so but yeah the 30 34 characters um, you know some of them are tiny like one liners but some of them are monologues um, most of which he wrote about in the book um, so yeah it was great that they I try and make them all completely different they've all got different accents they're quite big bold characters most of them so yeah how did you perfect his character then did you just ask your family members a lot of what he was like when he was younger and things like that? Yeah, well, my nan helped me a lot. Um, sadly, she passed away a few months ago now, but she uh, she always kind of helped me with a lot of things. So, so for example, um, he talked about one stage in the book, which I do in the play as well, when he met my nan. They met um, uh, social dancing. Um, and uh, he, she said to me, uh, one of the first times they met, he, he said to her, um, You've got a cracking figure, but you know I've got skinny legs, and so uh, I found that really funny. So I added that as one of the lines in the play, but obviously he never wrote about that. But um, so that's one of the lines he says in the play when he meets my nan. You know. Did your Did your granddad like theatre? Do you think? Did he share a love for it? The what thing? Sorry? Theatre, sorry. Did he share yeah, I, th I think he did like theatre. Um, I don't. Th they didn't uh, go too often, but um, they he certainly liked coming along. I got into theatre when I was 15, so you know, from there until I was 18 when he died, he was he was always there supporting me and stuff, and I think he enjoyed uh, going to see musicals and stuff, um, so yeah. Do you prefer to act solo? Um, no, it's quite lonely at times actually, um, acting on your own. It's, it's so nice. When you're acting with someone, um, you, you're completely in connection with them, so you can you can just take whatever they give you, and if they're taking everything you give them, then you've got this beautiful um, partnership. But um, on your own, you have to create everything by yourself, so it can be quite lonely at times. Um, and you need a lot of stamina. To, well, I feel like I, I have to work up my stamina and try and keep my head focused quite a lot in order to do it, because there's no one else to rely on, you know. So what's the message you want to send out to your audience when they see the play? Well, what inspired me about his book was he describes himself at, his, at the beginning as an ordinary guy who hasn't done a lot. Um, and he sort of apologises for that. And then he goes on to tell this amazing life story. And uh, what really inspired me to, to want to do it as a play was because I want people to kind of understand that being ordinary is a great thing and you can still do extraordinary stuff, you know? And it's essentially what he does. And I think it does give that kind of message at the end when you kind of go on this journey of a very average bloke's life and yet he does the most incredible things and you sort of realise how great kind of life is. So I sort of hope that people can leave going, you know, this is, uh, like life is great even if, it, if you are old and you don't have to be rich or famous or anything like that. You can just have an average life and that's great. Well, the reception of it's been amazing. A lot of five-star reviews and everything. How does that make you feel? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's brilliant. So I'm hoping we get some more reviewers in um, over here at the Fringe. But previous to this, there's been five-star reviews and we've had some great audiences in. So it's it's amazing. I mean, what what's most important for me is just to be able to share this story with as many people as possible. So 
you know, the the more the people that see it, the better it is for, for me and I think for my granddad as well. well. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, thank you very much. And where can me. we catch it? Uh, it's on here at the Gilded Balloon um, at 2.30 every day, uh, excluding the 18th, all through August. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very and much. This has been Marvel TV.